Okay, welcome to the M&M Show. Today, we're going to tell you how to get noticed. <laughs> Okay, let me let me give you a disclaimer. Before you go right. into any relationship, you got to say, what's my insecurity that's going to ruin this relationship security? Mm. You got to say that. Most people don't do that. They're looking for the perfection in another person. They're looking for, they're looking, well, he's got to do this. He's got to do that. She's got to do this. She's got to do that. But you, they don't go in realizing that, when, you know, you, you can be like a vehicle. You know, you buy a car and the engine is bad. And you and, and and it's got a bad engine, and then you drive it into a to a, to a garage, and and it's got all these pre existing issues with it. it. Starts smoking, and then right. what we do is we want our our spouse to fix it. We we're kind of like the engine. <laughs> we got these pre existing issues. We don't tell the person, and then when the car starts smoking, we're like, hey, can you fix it? No, you got to know what is your issue. What are you gonna do that could ruin this relationship? Mm. What is the thing that you could do that could mess it up? Um, I, I think that's super important. Yeah. So you're saying like before you uh, want to get noticed, make sure that you're not um, there's some you work on yourself. Make sure you notice what you have issues with before everyone's got all, all got issues. We can lie about it. You know, whoever's right now clicking off because you don't want to deal with your issues. No, we all have some kind of we all have, you know, relationships are like a plane. We all got bags we're trying to check. Right. And some of us got some extra bags. We're like, and we're like, oh, that one's that one weighs a little bit more. You gotta have to pay a little bit more to check that bag into this relationship. So I think it's really um, here's the other thing. And then I'm, I want to let you share. I think um, women have been I want to just say this. Women have been hurt. OK, women have been majorly hurt because they've been faked out by feminism. Mm. OK. And the foolishness of social media. OK. Right now, we live in a generation that says, if you're a woman, anything you do is awesome and that you don't make any bad choices, right? You can wear whatever you want to wear to the gym and it's he's a pervert for looking at you, you know, even mm -hmm. though you have on an underwear. You can, you, you know, anything you do is, 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 is glorified. Oh, you want to be a stripper? Oh, I don't judge you. <laughs> God does, you know, and who wants to have a mom that, I mean, all these things, you know, I was watching a sporting thing the other day and this, this awesome female athlete, I go, what is that? What is she promoting? Only fans on regular TV. And this is just like, this is terrible. And yet feminism is training women that when things are bad, it's his fault. When things are bad, society. When things are bad, you know, relationships not working out. You can just say, yeah, he did this bad thing to me. And, and you know, so I think feminism hurts women. I think the internet, uh, you don't have guys as much on there kind of being objectified and all of that. Women are the ones that are on the internet. So I think these things really can hurt uh, the perception of let's take accountability. That's my point. I think women aren't trained from a society, uh, you know, from a, a social standpoint that maybe where they're at has more to do about their own taking responsibility uh, versus society has done it, so on and so forth. And that's the reason why I say you got to make sure that you know your own insecurity uh, when you go into a relationship so you don't ruin a relationship. Mm. So how do you do that? How do you how do you focus on your insecurities? Well, I think so how do you know you can have them? Man, I think I think you, there's nothing better than looking in a mirror, <laughs> and that's the reason why the Word of God is the mirror. See, if you don't ever look into the Word of God, you will never know those things. If you never go to the Bible, you will never know. You'll go into relationships with 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 thinking you're doing better than you. I mean, that's how it was for me when I first came to church, and they started reading me scriptures and showing me that I had pre existing issues. That were going to hurt any relationship. They showed me, Michael, the reason you're going to porn is because you're lonely. And if you look at the statistics now, 15% of men say they have zero close friends. 15%. Hmm. 80% of men don't even know how to talk to a woman because they're afraid of rejection because they've been looking at so much internet pornography. It's become standard now. Right? And I had no idea. I was lonely. So lonely. Now, oh. I wasn't in one of these stats, but I was lonely. That's why I was going there. Uh, and they're saying, and this is a great article that I read, by 2030, they say 45% of 25 to 45-year-olds will be single and childless. Wow. Single and childless by 2030. <clears throat> wow. Talk about how to get Seven noticed. Years. Exactly. Oh, six years' time. Yeah. Talk about how to get noticed. We, we got to so really- seems to be like a population changing where people aren't getting married as much. Yeah. People aren't getting married. People aren't getting together. People aren't being noticed. People aren't being noticed. Instagram is being noticed. Facebook is being noticed. We are, but the thing is, we are trying to get noticed. Yes, it, that's my point. You know, we're faked out by social media. We're faked out by feminism that are saying all these things. We're faked off by this masculine. We're faked out. And I think we got to go to um, go some examples. Got to go old school. Got to go back to the mirror. 
Um, yeah. Ruth I, and Boaz, I think, are good yeah, examples. Exactly. And I think to be noticed, sisters, uh, in God's kingdom, if you want to be, you know, if you want to go after a dating relationship, you need to go after God first. Um, and I think of great examples in the Bible of uh, my big thing is be a kingdom worker mm. and you'll be noticed. And uh, I think of three women actually in the Bible, Rebecca, Rachel, and Ruth, who all, uh, who God found their husbands for them. So they weren't really focused on, on just wanting to get focused married. The they were focused on the work. Exactly. So if we think about it, Isaac and Rebecca, Genesis 24, God sent, uh, or Abraham sent his servant, right, to look for Isaac's wife. Arranged marriage. Right, sure. There's an arranged marriage going on. Mm -hmm. And what is uh, Rebecca doing? She's the one that offers to water the servant's sheep. Serving. So, again, serving. Serving, be a hard worker, and you'll get noticed. The other example is Jacob and Rachel. She was also a shepherdess, Genesis 29, yep. and happened to be watering her father's sheep yep. when uh, Isaac came around. And he's like, wow, this sister is working yep. and uh, is, is doing, uh, going about her father's business. Wow, what a good daughter she is. And uh, lo and behold, they get, he falls in love with her. He has to wait seven years, but he still falls in love with her. And then my and he favorite, her. he noticed her. He noticed her. And I think both women uh, were about their work. And my favorite example is Ruth, Ruth, because she was a Moabite. Yep. But she put herself. Yeah, but what does Moabite have to do so the audience knows? A Moabite. So she wasn't even a Jew. She didn't even believe in God. But through the example of Naomi, she decided that she would want to follow God, and she said, "Your God will be my God." So, sisters, when we, I think we're like when we come into the kingdom, we have some of that Moabite in us, mm. but. God gives us women who can mentor us like a Naomi. Mm. So are you listening to the Naomi in your life? Because if you listen to the Naomi life, you may get noticed. Because Naomi gave her very, very specific instructions that she obeyed mm -hmm. and scored the man. Yeah. But she was first noticed by Boaz doing what? Working. She was in, she the, was field. in the field. She was gleaning. Uh, she was gleaning food for both her and Naomi. And so these three women alone, God found them husbands because they were about the business. So I think when we're about the business, sisters, about the business of God, we will find the man and we will get noticed. I think, you know, I think of the scripture in Matthew 6, we all know it, but seek first his kingdom and first. his righteousness. And it says, and all these things will be added to you. And I think if we want to be added to, we've got to be focused on seeking first the kingdom and, mm -hmm. and just being about, as I said, God's purpose, being mm -hmm. about God's business. And I think that attracts godly men because mm -hmm. they want to do great things for God too. So they want a sister who's in there, rolled up sleeves about God's business. So I would just say, yeah, be, be a kingdom work, worker and you'll be noticed. Yeah. I mean, I, even you, I, I, and what I notice about you and our relationship is just that you wanted to do great things for God as a woman of God. And often, uh, I think what feminism has done is it's trained women to be more masculine. Uh, it's uh, told women to get these high-ranking jobs, that it's awesome to have a high-ranking job, sisters, I'm not saying that, but to have a job as a CEO or a top manager, you're forced to embrace male qualities in some sense and get rid of some of your awesome, beautiful female qualities. You have to be doggy dog. You have to be cutthroat. You have to be without emotion to be a CEO and to be in these high positions. And feminism is training women to be that, like that. And so when, when, and then if you do get it and you become CEO and you've got this master's PhD, you're super educated and all this stuff. And then, and then now you, 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 you don't really, and, and you've embraced these manly qualities uh, in that way. In some ways that you've given up some of your feminine, it makes it difficult for you to submit to someone who you see yourself as better than, or you've done more than. And that's why you look at all the statistics. You look at 75% of divorces uh, are at the hands of women. 90% uh, are college educated. Not saying you shouldn't be college educated. But I'm just saying these things can really hurt how women view their role in, 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 in a relationship. And they can come in with an inflated. And I think the thing that was so special about you is you were everything I just said, highly talented, highly intellectual, all these other things. But you're like, my role is not to lead um, my, my partner. Uh, and, and that really inspired me and helped me and made me excited. Um, and I, I noticed it because remember at the time, 
we had all those incredible sisters in the church, the, the stockbroker, all this stuff. And they were so masculine. They were so like critical and, you know, down on the brothers. Mm -hmm. You remember? Uh, yeah. and, and I noticed that you were like the exact opposite. You were like, yeah, I've done a lot. I've done this, I've done this, done this, but I, don't, I, don't, I do not want to lead my husband. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not want to lead the relationship. And that was very, um, again, just like Boaz. I mean, he noticed. And because you were like that, I wanted to protect you. Right. I was like, we, we need more sisters to impact this world. <laughs> She's incredible. Highly talented. Highly beautiful. Highly everything, but highly in touch with her role. And not that submission is what a subordinate does. According to the Bible, submission is what equals. Right, do. right. Jesus was completely submissive, but equal. You understood that. And I noticed it. Yeah, uh, that, thank you. I think, I think, yeah, <laughs> actually, you. funny enough, I, I did, was a manager, so I actually hired men. Yes. <laughs> and I, I unfortunately had to hire and fire one guy, poor guy, Charlie. I still oh, remember it's the first. Oh, the Charlie, only... I remember Charlie. <laughs> Charlie got fired. We tried to reach out to Charlie. <laughs> That's right. Didn't we? We went, I did. We tried I tried to get, to get to Charlie. To church. To, I did, Charlie. But yeah, I mean, I got hired, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I think um, it's such a fine balance for women because. We are, you know, we, we, we are expected to go to college and university, um, and then we get, we, we need to work. So mm -hmm. if we're, and if we're a great disciple, we get promoted. And those things I were, was able to do. And, um, but at the same time, I think it takes a great level of trusting God and also just obedience. If the Bible says that it's better for me to submit to my husband, like, even if I, maybe not intellectually understand it, although now I do, because when you, ex when you actually put into practice God's word, you, un you, you understand it more because you understand the value and the heart of it. Um, I realize that, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm your equal, but um, I need to, uh, I need to allow this marriage to be, to glorify God and submission, a wife submitting to her husband glorifies God mm. because at the, at the end of the day, we, we are one and there is only one Head. Now, and people notice it, and people have noticed that in our people marriage. notice it. They go right. Hmm. They take notice, and they don't know why they're noticing. They're seeing a godly quality. They don't know why what it right. is. And if and if you just said you know you need to submit, and you you're not a disciple, you're like, well, oh, okay, or you I, need to come I, to church. Or I don't want to do that. Right. But uh, when you really understand the heart of it, then it's it's different. That's right. And I think uh, yeah. Okay, so what what's some things for to to get noticed for guys? What can guys do to get noticed? Um, well, I think like, well, we talked about Ruth and Boaz and I think one of Boaz's great qualities was yeah, what that, is, what is, what? you know, he was a, he was a business owner, business owner. He had his own field and business he had any, any he hired and hired people. Okay. Let me say, let me say something on that point. <laughs> yeah. So in Genesis, I'm not to go too far in Genesis okay. chapter one, it says, um, it's not good for a man to be alone. Right. Uh, and then of course he, he was given uh, work and he had to name all the animals and all that kind of stuff. Right. But if a man does not have a good relationship with God, if he if he doesn't have a job, okay, right. it is absolutely good for you to be alone. There you go, brothers. Get a job. And Boaz had a he had a job. He had a cranking job. He was a business he had, owner. He had he had his own field of business. He had his own field, and he allowed uh, Ruth to work in it and That's to right. glean from it. So I think so. Yeah, he supported one, her. Number one, not he, she supporting him. He led her in everything. Bro? Boaz led in every way. Every way. I think, too, he was focused on God. If, if you guys read the book of uh, Ruth, he constantly talks about God, and he actually blesses Ruth uh, in one of, I think it's chapter 2. He blesses mm -hmm. her. Uh, he, was, he was also, uh, he was a man of action. He was very proactive. Mm -hmm. So when he saw the need that uh, when Naomi approached him, he's like, okay, we need to, we need to make this happen. And he made it happen. He contacted the other kinsman redeemer, and he and he just made it happen. Okay, so let me say a couple. So that's powerful. See, he was number one. He had his life together. Number one. You have your life together. Sisters are going to notice. You don't have your life together. <laughs> sisters are going to notice. <laughs> They're going to notice. So you want to be noticed, bro? Get your life together. You may need to take two or three years to get your life together. Yeah. You may need to take four or five years to get your life together. I'm not saying take four or five years, but you may need to take four to get. Notice to where you can really take care and protect and be a boss. The other thing, initiative. To, exactly. Initiative. Women, sisters love a brother that takes initiative, right? It doesn't matter if it's a good idea, bad idea. You got to take initiative. Just put yourself right? out put there. Put yourself out there. Lead. Be forceful. And and, and really, so boy, it sounds like that's what boys did. And that's 
Yeah. I mean, that was our dynamic and as he, well. Yeah, he was noticed. Ruth's like, oh, I like this guy. And so did Naomi. <laughs> Naomi, her spiritual mom, was like, this is a good man. Yeah. He was considerate. Mm. And I think of the why I say that's important is because the Bible says, husbands, be considerate mm. of your wives. What a wonderful quality. He considered her. He allowed her. He was kind. He offered this orphan extra, he said, God, he, to his coworkers, protect her. Yep. She's under, she's now part of the, the family. Just protect her and make sure she's not um, injured while she's out there because it was probably very dangerous for young women to be out in the fields. Uh, they could be raped uh, by other people. So he said, protect her and allow her to take as much food as she wants. So a sister feels protected. Um, when, when a brother's spiritually protective of her, sisters notice that. Sisters notice that. That's godly. So if a brother's like, hey, how's your quiet time? How's your prayer? How you doing? Hey, it's 930. Feeling? Maybe it's time to go home. Exactly. Or do you? How are you getting home? Yeah. Are you on your own? Yeah. Can, I, can we all go together and get you home first? Exactly. Or And let me be late. You know, some brothers are like, see you, sis. And these poor sisters are going home super late at night. Or or the the, the text message thing is like, wow, you do you do give you do I get more daily contact than the people you're reaching out to? <laughs> right. Like we text every day, but I haven't seen you helping anyone become becoming a Christian or you know, these kind of things. It's very important uh to put God first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think lastly too, he had integrity. You know, he was a man of his word. And um, as we know in uh, chapter four, he had to kind of go through a process before he could actually marry Ruth. And he yep. made sure that it was done with integrity. Mm. Uh, he checked with the, the whole uh, village. He checked with the courts to make sure that this, this other guy, the other kinsman who could have married her, uh, you know, he, he had the first dibs. And the guy was like, no, nah, it's fine. You have it. Mm. And so he married her. But he did it all with integrity. He didn't cut corners. Integrity, business owner, protector. basically overall protector. Consider it. Consider it. Those getting it, you, you, you know, if your brother, you're trying to protect your sister spiritually, you're going to get noticed. You're going to get noticed. You're also going to get noticed if you're not trying to protect them. You're going to get noticed, bro. Um, if you're if you're someone who really has your life together, where she doesn't have to worry about the financial challenges of, of what a relationship with you looks like, uh, you own a company. We need more business owners. Absolutely. Uh, I do think that when we got together, when uh, you know, before I was in the ministry, I was still a disciple. But one of my best months, uh, when I called Michelle and said, "Hey, yeah, you know, I just closed a twenty thousand dollar deal and I got ten thousand dollar commission. I'm going to buy a new car." And uh, I'm not saying that happens every day for everyone, but Michelle saw that I was driven. I was somebody who wanted to do great things and protect her. And this is very huge. It gets you noticed. Uh, I was doing my best to try to be a Boaz. Mm -hmm. um, try to be kind. Try to be honorable and be a man of integrity so yeah. i paid off all my tickets <laughs> i had some tickets i had to pay them off. oh yes i forgot he also honored her purity oh of course because obviously we remember naomi she says go his... mm -hmm. to the uh what was it the, she laid at the yeah, foot his of his feet bed. Mm -hmm. at, at the place with a floor. threshing floor and uh she lay there so she she uh, she was vulnerable yeah and he could have taken Super advantage vulnerable and he he covered her and and basically didn't take advantage of her at all. And he said, "Go home early mm -hmm. that next morning. Don't let anyone see you because he wanted to honor her purity because nothing had happened." But he didn't and what want, and what did she do? He didn't want gossip. She obeyed. Okay, so check this out. You want to get notices? Let him lead. Let him lead. Don't wait till he's dating you to lead. Let him lead. Let him tell you what to do. And yeah. then if he isn't, let him know. Yeah. Be honest. Say, bro, I don't feel protected. I don't feel like you protected my purity. Exactly. I don't feel like you texting me every day protects my purity. Yeah. And, then, and that brother would be like, yeah, really afraid. And brother, be a brother. Don't be a sister, right? Sisters like to talk a lot. That's awesome. There's nothing wrong with it. But if she's talking to you every day and not somebody else out there and she's not reaching out, and then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're building. Yeah, you're building an <laughs> idol. That's what you're building. It's an idol. You're not building. It's an idol you're building, and it's going to come crashing down on her and you. So you need to be able to say, sis, it's awesome. You know, appreciate the call. How's it going in, in your evangelism? You know, we talk daily. Um, and we're yeah. not even dating, you know, that's, but you got to protect her. Exactly. Women can struggle emotionally, men struggle physically. And so if you're giving her emotional attention that she's not even getting from Jesus Christ or a discipler or people that she's reaching out to, that is something that you got to be mindful of. Right. And I like that, you know, I think the other day someone asked me about building with a brother. I said, you need to be building up the kingdom. Mm. Um, and I think that's really important is, you know, when is it ready to build with a brother? 
when you can uh, with a you know you can examine have I been building up the kingdom? Yeah, look at and what you've you done. And if you haven't, start building up the kingdom. Yeah, first. seek the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom, and then God will add. Right, let God add. Don't try and add yourself. Yeah. So I think the the couple other things with with women that are very noticeable with Ruth's yeah, attitude example, is uh yeah. man just humble super super supportive willing loyal to, loyal willing to go in. loyal is huge because let's just say you are a brother who's working on you you're in that quote unquote season where you don't have the car you don't have the business you don't have the and then you could tell she kind of likes you but she gives you enough distance to work on you if she's loyal to you through the thick and thin that gets noticed by men because typically men have to we we you know, there are differences between both genders, things that are unfair in both genders. Women get objectified, I believe. But men have to deal with rejection like it is night and day. We just mm. know that that's part of the deal. We get fired, we this, we that. So when someone stands by his side, even when he's not this, you know, Boaz, but could be, again. That potential. See, yeah, look at one of our potential, not perfection, one of our other episodes. And she's like, this guy's got potential. He's trying to be Boaz. He's trying. That gets noticed. Mm. Women notice that. Sisters notice that. Right? Exactly. And brothers notice when you notice. <laughs> we want to be needed. We want to be, we want to be believed in. And when someone believes in us, even when we're down, I'll never forget what Michelle said on one of my worst days in the kingdom. Michelle says, Yeah, I thought we were going to do great things for God together. Man, that was the those are the words I needed. Mm. Those are the words I needed. It really inspired me to go on. Uh, but right. I think Ruth's humility, her submission, her her uh, support uh, of him, I think those are things that, that... And she had a great relationship with her mentor, her disciple, Naomi. I think Guys notice that. Huge, we want huge you to, sisters, yeah. Yeah, we, we want you to have friendships with other people. You got to have your own Who's friends. Who's influencing you, sis, you know, in a godly way. Mm -hmm. And I think when we allow another older woman to influence us spiritually who's spiritual herself, we will find, we will be noticed. Mm. God will find a man for us. He's like, God will notice you. God will. And then he'll put a Boaz in your life. And when you're about God's business, he will be about your business. That's how you get noticed. We love you. And to God be all the glory. <laughs>